The E-Zone 98 and V-Core 98 might look extremely similar on paper, but they actually have huge playability differences that kind of go beyond the specs. When I first got back into tennis about four or five years ago, I remember thinking that the E-Zone and V-Core lines were a bit redundant. 98 square inch head sizes, 305 grams, 16 by 19 string patterns, although I think back then the V-Core might have been a 1620. But anyways, as I got to playing more with each racket, I realized that these are kind of the perfect example of two rackets that could look very similar, but actually have huge playability differences for one reason or the other. With the new head shape and throat design on the new V-Core V7, they're pretty much more different than they've ever been, so I figured it was kind of the perfect time to compare the two frames head to head and maybe help some people figure out which could be better for their game. Now remember, if you want to check out either of these two frames, we've got them available on our website, racketsandrunners.ca, and also please remember to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you like our content. Also, leave any questions you got in the comment section down below. I do my best to get to as many as possible, but before anybody comments on this horrendous tan, I'm doing my best to balance it out, but I can't really play tennis without a hat, so I don't really know what to do. Maybe try wearing more sunscreen, Luca. Anyways, I tested both of these rackets with Polytour Pro 16L at 53 pounds. Let's get into it. The biggest differentiating factor between the two rackets is how they compare in terms of user friendliness. The E-Zone sweet spot is significantly bigger than the V-Cores. Honestly, it's one of the biggest sweet spots on any 98 that I've used in a long time, and it kind of helps make the racket a lot easier to use than the V-Core. The V-Core, on the other hand, has quite a small and unforgiving sweet spot, especially for a racket with an isometric head shape. If you're not making perfect contact with this frame, it can get a little bit wild, and I think a lot of that comes down to this new shape. By making the head a little bit more squared off at the top here, Yonix has pretty much brought the sweet spot a little bit farther up the racket. That means that when you swing this racket, more mass is concentrated farther up the frame, which makes the transfer of energy from your hand to the contact point a little bit more difficult to control. The V-Core is definitely a demanding racket, and having a smaller sweet spot like this also means that the feel outside the sweet spot is a little bit harsher when you don't make perfect contact. It's actually kind of crazy to me that the E-Zone is technically stiffer than the V-Core because the V-Core felt more jarring to me most of the time. That being said, the V-Core 90 definitely isn't an uncomfortable racket. The vibration and dampening mesh in both these rackets does a really good job of toning down most of the uncomfortable vibrations, but I'm not the biggest fan of the slightly muted feel it does provide. It's by no means a bad feel, but I do think there's better out there, and it did just require a slightly longer period of adaptation for me to get used to these rackets. One of the main reasons the E-Zone was easier to use is because, like I said, the V-Core has a bit of a wild side. You basically have to play a high spin game to control the V-Core because one of the areas in which it's most inconsistent is when you're hitting flat shots. Here's the thing though, if you do play with high amounts of topspin, that smaller sweet spot does help make the V-Core more precise than the E-Zone. It really is a modern spin racket in the truest sense. If you want to know a little bit more about what I mean by modern spin rackets, go check out our comparison of the Aero 98 V-Core 98 and Extreme Tour, but basically it's a style of racket that's made to give you the utmost sensation of accuracy as to where you're dropping your spinny ground strokes in your opponent's court. The E-Zone is much more traditional in its control profile. It does well with spin, but it doesn't require it the same way the V-Core does, and it does much better with flat hitting. The sweet spot is lower down the head, so it makes for a slightly easier swing pattern to handle, and also, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it does have a more closed off string bed here, which just makes for a slightly lower launch angle. It doesn't have the same wild side as the V-Core either, so it won't just be better for control, it'll also be easier to control. I've talked a lot about how the higher sweet spot and different swing pattern on the V-Core makes the racket harder to use, so what exactly is the point of it? Well, things get pretty interesting in terms of power. They're actually both very powerful frames, especially for 98, but their power profiles differ quite drastically. Power has always been kind of a funny one in tennis because what does it actually mean? Is it easy access to depth? Is it more pace on your shot? Well, both these rackets kind of typify either version of power easy depth on the E-Zone, and a little bit more pace potential on the V-Core. Because the V-Core's weight distribution and sweet spot is higher up the racket, it basically adds a bit of leverage and power to your shot. For an extreme example, think of a sword versus a dagger. The sword has harder hitting potential because it's a longer lever than the dagger. I know it's a bit of a weird example, but I digress. When you get proper hold of the ball on the V-Core 98, you can absolutely launch it. It's a very unique design that really only reminds me of the Head Boom Pro, but it makes for a racket that has insane pace generating potential and probably the most out of any 98 I've ever tried. The E-Zone has easier access to depth because of its bigger sweet spot and easier swing pattern. You don't have to hit as hard and as precise as you do with the V-Core to access its power. 
Now, technically only the V core is considered by Yonix a proper spin racket here, but both have amazing spin generating potential. I do think that the V core does just edge it in terms of spin potential, not just because it's a racket that pretty much needs spin to perform, but also because that more open string bed and higher launch just makes it a little bit more spinny in general. The E-Zone does have a more aerodynamic shape and a whippier feel in general, so you'll generate more racket head speed, but it's still not quite as spin friendly as the V core. I also just want to mention that as stupid and gimmicky as the V core silicone oil infused grommets might sound they actually do a very impressive job of amplifying string movement you can really feel the string snap back here kind of like what you got on spin grommets on older arrows there's one playability characteristic that I've kind of held off talking about until now because it's really going to help me hammer in the point that the Vcore 98 is very much an advanced player's frame while the E-Zone 98 is more of an intermediate to advanced racket. That's because stability is so much higher on the Vcore that if you're looking for a racket that's going to stay rock solid against better, harder hitting opponents, the Vcore is definitely the one to go with. I alluded to it earlier, but the Vcore's makeover wasn't just in the head. Yonix also totally reshaped the throat and completely nailed the more stable response they were going for. There's just something about the way that it flexes in the throat that feels so solid that there were moments where I really thought I was playing with a racket that was about 15 grams heavier. Yes, the sweet spot is small and the frame definitely can flutter when you hit outside of it, but when you do dial yourself into a zone with this racket, it can become a bit of an unmovable object with honestly truly world-class stability and solidity. Honestly, I think this is part of the reason why so many professional players are switching to this version of the V-Core. They find the sweet spot 99% of the time, so inconsistency issues outside of the sweet spot are basically negligible to them. Put all that top end power, spin, and precision into such a stable package, and you've got a racket that becomes extremely rewarding in the right hands. Personally, I struggle a little bit too much with its demanding side to call it my racket of choice, but I completely understand how this thing could become a legendary racket pretty quickly. With all that said, the E-Zone is still a very rewarding and competitive player's frame. I just don't think its playability characteristics are as exclusive to very good players as the V-Cores are. It's the racket I prefer out of the two of them because I have an easier time dialing into it, and I also think that if you do want to boost power, spin, and feel a little bit, it responds extremely well to customization. I've been giving this a lot of thought recently, but racket head shape and overall frame design is a sort of spec that doesn't really get talked about much and kind of gets overlooked by people when determining whether a racket could work for their game. I think it's one of the essential characteristics in a racket and pretty much the most important reason why the E-Zone and the V-Core 98 are so different, so I'm going to try to talk about it a little bit more going forward. But for now, remember that if you want to try either of these two rackets, stop by the store to grab some demos or you can check them out at racketsandrenders.ca.